So what this is, is uh, it's a framework that allows you to take the important aspects or the critical uh, exercises and, and portions of policy management, creation and deployment, and move them outside of your live domain environment uh, into an offline repository that allows you to put workflows around it, checks and balances that are critical to uh, proper change control management and flow. Um, it allows you to manage all your environment in one single console, be those uh, trusted or untrusted domains, um, on-premise GPOs or Active Directory. Um, with extensions, you also have the capability to manage things like Linux and Mac um, and bring them in under a single management pane uh, within your organization. Um, it provides uh, a archival history of these important policies, so you can always look back and see uh, what policies were in place at a given point in time, how they've changed over time. Um, this obviously leads to um, you being able to uh, effectively and easily pass audits, um, being able to look uh, historically and forensically at what was in place at a certain point in time, generate those management information reports that are, that are required to show what you're doing, how you're locking down the environment uh, to you know, upper management and the board. Um, one of the things it allows you to do is it, it takes away this silos of, of different uh, policies being managed in different areas and in different ways. Um, if you're a large organization, you have multiple domains uh, across multiple countries, uh, various departments, lines of business, it can get quite complicated and quite um, the, the sprawl is quite real with regards to policy management and different people, different teams doing things different ways. Um, so UPA also has the capability to bring that all under one uh, umbrella, if you will, or a single pane of glass. Um, those teams in those different places can still do their work, but everyone's following uh, the same process, the same procedures, and it can all be viewed at a high level um, through the single pane of glass. Next slide, please. One of the important things, uh, as I just mentioned, you're able to set up because you're pulling this out of the live environment, you, you're sort of a couple of things of benefits, right? You're removing um, the danger uh, of making updates uh, to your live environment so that when a, a policy is changed and saved, it automatically is propagated out and goes live to the users and machines. You're taking that away. The second thing you're doing is because you can set up a workflow uh, for these policy objects uh, within UPA, you are removing that key person risk, right? So that one person can't create a GPO, edit a GPO, and deploy a GPO, for example, uh, and create that uh, single point of failure. The key to that is uh, being able to set up these different assignments in UPA, what we call assignments. So an assignment has is a combination of two things. The first one is a role. So this is a, a particular job function, editor, reviewer, approver um, of a particular group policy or portion of it. Uh, and then that gets combined with a view, um, which is basically dictates what that person or what that that view assignment that you create can can look at or work on whether it's a single ou whether it's a domain whether it's um, ou's across different domains and those get combined into an assignment that can then be part of a workflow management for a particular set of group policy objects next slide please another key part of this is change control process, right? So you've got your different roles uh, as a GPO moves through um, the editing and the approving process. One of the key analysis factors that UPA provides is this conflict analysis. Um, so before GPO becomes live, essentially before you export it from GPO back into your live production environment, you obviously a key step there is to make sure it's not going to conflict with anything that's already out there. Um, or if it does conflict, it's intentional, right? That what you're gonna deploy um, isn't breaking or undoing anything um, out there. Again, making sure that you're not gonna break something, uh, making sure that you're not gonna bring down your users or your environment, and making sure that you're not gonna create um, any unnecessary security holes um, through mis misconfigured group policy objects. You know, GPOs um, and, and policies are a target of, of bad actors. Um, you know, there are tools out there that look for misconfigured group policy objects that look to exploit um, if gained, if they gain the right privileges to deploy or change group policy settings. So it's very important to know um, what you're deploying before you actually do it. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, change auditing. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory here, but this is always an important uh, part of every organization's journey. Uh, is being able to um, track the who, what, when, 
and where, right? So the change auditing uh, applies to the, the objects that are under management within UPA. Um, it allows you to see exactly who made a change, um, what that change was to the policy, who approved it, who, who deployed it to an environment. Um, it allows you to look back at time. Uh, auditors can look back at time to see what policies were active at a particular point in time, uh, if there's any issues, or to make sure that there's consistent compliance uh, with regulatory um, you know, guidelines or legal requirements over time. That they're quickly and easily able to do this by exporting the reports uh, and showing that they were in compliance uh, over time. So I'm going to walk through Universal Policy Administrator and talk about some of the and show you some of the things that Chris talked about and go into a little bit more detail. So what I'm going to do is run through the UI real quick and show you some of the functionality. So the administration tab is where you create your uh, delegation model. Uh, the delegation model consists of roles. So you can see I've got a role right here. And for the purposes of this demo, I'll just go ahead and create a new one real quick. So a new role. And uh, let's see. Role zero two. And now I'm going to edit that role. Uh, I've got it there. Oh, so now you can see I've got uh, it's in edit mode and I can go through. And now what I can do is I can start delegating permissions. The permissions within a role are the activities that the group that you assign to this are going to be able to uh, do. So you can see I've got uh, within the domain being able to work with domain capabilities uh, within the OU. Uh, create OUs. This is going to be, and we'll talk about this in a minute when we go to the organization tab. Uh, universal so the UP control. That's universal policies. That's your policies that within the within the system represent your policies for your non-domain joined uh, resources or your GPOs. Uh, and then uh, AD control. So this would be control managing uh, users, managing uh objects with an active directory things of that nature uh gpos that's when you take a up a universal policy and turn that into a gpo by ex exporting or turn a gpo into a up by importing it uh and a, and a quick side note chris talked about the offline repository we've got an embedded git repository inside universal policy administrator what that means is inside your system, you will have a Git repository that gives you uh, full change management control and monitoring over your universal policies. And that includes when they get exported out to Active Directory or imported. Uh, so you can see, and then we've got the agents. And I'll talk about this a little bit. This ties in, this is the tie-in where AD Bridge and UPA kind of come together uh, to give you a full end-to-end -end solution. But for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and create full domain control, full OP, o, OU control, and full UP control. And you can see there's, there's things in here that I'll talk about, uh, <clears throat> like being able to approve a UP. So within the workflow, and I'll show you that in a moment, uh, you can create a role uh, for people who are auditors. Uh, they can go in and review. Uh, they can, you can create uh, roles for people who approve, export, import. You can get very granular on the, on the permissions that you'll allow people to have. But for the purposes of this, of this demo, I'm just going to go ahead and save this role. Now, what I'm going to do is show you a view. So the full delegation model consists of the roles, views, and assignments. Uh, and I've got a view there, but the way that works is, and I'll just go ahead and create view zero two. And within a view, this is what people are going to see when they log in. Uh, so that what that means is uh, once I create a, a delegation model, the view is going to be when they log into the system, the things that they're going to have access to, because you don't want everybody seeing every 
uh, universal policy out there. You don't want your, uh, let's say, desktop guys to be able to see and work with server uh, universal policies or vice versa, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, and here you could what you can do is you can pick individual po universal policies. So you can have within the desktop group, you could have a person who's responsible for identity management. Uh, and they would be responsible for like password policies, things like that. Uh, you can select OUs. Uh, so you can see I can go in and select different OUs that I have. And for this one, I'm just going to select that one. That is my primary. And the AD OUs. And again, this is the OUs in our system versus the OUs in AD, which we create a mirror, but we do allow you to create uh, OUs, delegation OUs that are vis visibility into specific policies without allowing someone to have necessarily have access to the AD OUs as well. I'll include that one. And I'm going to save that. And then to complete the delegation model, what I can do is I create the assignments. So I'm going to create a new assignment. And here what you do is the assignment brings together the uh, role that you created. So the permissions, the views, what people are allowed to ex execute those permissions on, and then the users that are allowed to be a part of that assignment. So the people who are tied to that view in that role. So I'll include, include my role, include, and I'll include a view, demo view 02. And what I can do here is these are my groups and users within Active Directory. So I can include an entire group within AD, or I can include only specific users. And the reason we do that is you may not want an entire group of, of people within AD. You may not even want to use administrators, and that's an important point here. I can have an AD user who does not have administrative privileges, and I can create an assignment for them to be able to only work on specific, uh, specific GPOs, universal policies, specific rights. And the reason that's important is in native tools, you have to have uh, elevated permissions to be able to work with group policy objects. And then you end up with a bunch of users that have those elevated permissions. Well, within Universal Policy Administrator, you can leave within Active Directory a user who's not an administrator, but give them permission to perform certain activities on certain policies. So what I'm going to do is Go down here and there's my Charles Davis user account, not an admin, and I'm going to include that one. And now that CD user, that Charles Davis user account will have permissions to be able to log into Universal Policy Administrator and work on the things that I've assigned uh, via the roles and views. So, and then I can go in and see now uh, the demo role is a part of this assignment. CD, the Charles Davis user account and the demo view. So in a nutshell, that's how you create a delegation model. And as you can see, it can get very granular. Uh, if you wanna see more about on this, you can contact uh, Chris or someone at Microfocus and we can give you a demo and we can show you creating more detailed views, logging out, logging in with that user and see how that's the only, you know, things that you'll be able to see in the permission, permissions that you have and things like that. So then you've got your organization. And what this is, is this is the same concept as your OU structure within Active Directory. So we've got our repositories here. You can see we have cloud here. That's gonna tie into uh, if you have non-domain joined resources that you wanna manage uh, with policy, you can import a group policy object uh, as a universal policy, and then apply that to machines that are sitting outside the perimeter in other or in other locations uh, that are part of the system. The repositories, this is a reflection of my uh, AD environment. Uh, so all of my AD OU structures and then the delegation uh, OUs, this would be if I wanted to create a offline representation of different policies that aren't mirrored to uh, an OU. 
And then I've got my universal policies. And this is where you can start working with the policies that you've imported from Active Directory, uh, or you can start working with policies that uh, are new policies. And for the purposes of this, I'll just show you creating a new policy and the workflow that uh, is within Universal Policy Administrator. So I'm gonna create a new one. And this is zero one. And I can pick the domain. If you notice on the organization, tab, I did have multiple domains. So I can pick any of the domains that I have under management for this policy to be associated with. Uh, and a quick note on this, some of these domains are trusted, some of them are not. We do manage without anything on the domain controllers in any of the domains. You can import trusted and untrusted domains to manage the policies within Universal Policy Administrator. I'm going to use adanywhere.local. You can see I can when I create a new policy, I can either import one from an existing GPO uh, or I can create a new one. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to create a new one. And we support WMI filters as well. So I'm adding that, uni that new universal policy. And you can see now it's there. And it says release ver zero version zero. And it's checked out. Uh, and you'll see here, I can check it in. So what I'm going to do is, and you see, I can manage my Linux and Mac pol policies or my Windows policies. Linux and Mac is, is, a, is if you decide to bring in uh, the AD Bridge func functionality as well, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and marry AD Bridge and UPA together and use UPA as the uh, central management console for all of your policies. Inside your perimeter, in, in Active Directory, outside the perimeter, non-domain joined, Linux and Mac. So I'm gonna add a Windows group policy and let's do this. And I'm just gonna do password length because that's a good one to show you another really cool feature of Universal Policy Administrator. Minimum password length. Seven. Now let's say I'm, I'm someone who's working on a policy in the real live environment. If I did this, this would be really bad. Within universal policy, I can just say, mm, I'm going to make password link three. Of course, that's ridiculous, but we'll do it for the purposes of this demo. So add policy. And you can see here, I can go and review my policy. So I can add a whole bunch of different uh, uh, settings within this while I'm working on it. But I'm going to go back. Uh, password must be at least three. Yes, good. I'm going to save that. And now I have the Windows group policy setting in there of minimum password length equal three. So I feel pretty good about this. I've got my policy, my password policy done. I'm going to check it in and get ready to export to Active Directory. So I'm going to check that in. This is perfect. Submit. And now you can see I've got release zero, version one, and it is checked in. So now I can submit it for approval because I feel confident I've done a really good job here. It's going to get approved and exported. Please approve and submit. So now, and let me just scroll down here real quick. In fact, I will just do that. And you can see there's my CD web demo, pending approval, release, pending approval. So now what I can do is I can go in and look at this and say, security settings, I want to review it. And it's looking good. You know, maybe I'm not really paying attention. At this point, I can either look and see and go, wait a second, this doesn't seem right. I can't edit it because it's not checked out. 
uh, it's pending approval, uh, I can either say, hey, this doesn't look right and reject it and it'll get kicked back. Uh, and we do have notifications, so it, it can get kicked back for updates with a email notification to the person that was working on it saying, hey, what are you doing? This is minimum password length of three. That's not okay. Uh, I'm going to say that I wasn't paying attention. I'm just going to go ahead and try and approve it. Well, when I go to approve it, we have something that that can be done, and that's the conflict analysis. So when I'm, if I'm an auditor, I can go run the conflict analysis, or if I'm trying to approve this and don't really pay attention, we force customers to see the conflict analysis reports. What this does is this does a conflict analysis of the settings within this universal policy against all of the policies within the repository within uh, uh, Universal Policy Administrator. I have a bunch, so this is taking a moment, but the conflict analysis report there you can see right here says, whoa, wait a second, you've got conflicts. Oh, wait, I had a value of three, that's not right. Uh, obviously, I have a lot of conflicts here, but what you can do is you can create a template policy for your overall security policies that are that are required and you can always go in and run a conflict analysis against that template of what your security policy is supposed to look like against the entire data database the entire git repository and see if there are any conflicts so that, that so that you know you can go back and uh, do some remediation on those uh, but i can see i've got uh, the hipaa template is it says eight uh, I've got three, I've got, you know, others that are higher and lower, but what I would do here is I could, you know, run this as my uh, template and say, wait a second, no, you're, you're out of compliance, I'm going to cancel this, and I'm going to reject it, and I will just say length of three, no way. and it probably helps if I spell things right, reject. And now I can go in and you can see that it's been rejected and it can be checked out. And what I can do now is I can go and look at the events on this policy and see what's going on there. So when I log in, I can look and see It's going too fast, sorry. I can go look and see, oh, it was rejected. Uh, it'll tell me who rejected. In this case, I'm doing everything. Length of three, no way. Oh, okay. What was I thinking? So now what I can do is I can check it out. I can fix it. The conflict analysis has been run. I can rerun it myself if I want uh, and look and see uh, to make sure I've got it right before it even gets approved to be exported to Active Directory. Once a, once a policy is approved, it goes into a state where at that point, then you can export it to Active Directory into the OU where it belongs. Uh, so on the devices tab, devices just gives you a view of all of your devices under management, whether they're agents, the agent would be non-domain joins, so things outside the perimeter uh, or potentially Linux machines. Uh, and then I have full auditing within the system, so I can go and see all the user sessions. This is the stuff that was going on. You can see I was logged in as the administrator, and this is everything that I did. I can go and see what other users were doing, or I can look at, get a holistic view of all the events within the system. So real, as for a real quick demo, that is a high level of universal policy administrator, its capabilities, and the workflows through the system along with the delegation model. 